What's going on guys, this is Bobby Douglas and this is just part two of the Deuce McBride full game breakdown, so let's get right into it. He's going to be number four in the blue, I'm circling him right here, he is guarding the ball, and you can see a continuation of the first half, just that on-ball intensity, he's not afraid to step up and get in the guy's shirt, right, he closes out right there pretty disciplined, and again, same thing right there, again, just mirroring the ball, again, not really giving the ball handler really any space to operate or just be comfortable, right? And that's something that I think Deuce McBride can immediately find value in right there. Really nice look-ahead pass to Derek Culver. Um, pretty good start for the first half for Deuce McBride. Uh, first 22 seconds right here. Again, we talked about how his overall playmaking field gets kind of on enhanced in transition. This is another good example of it. Just kind of like the, the hit-ahead lob pass uh, to Derek Culver leading to free throws. And I think he missed the first one, and then he... What happened here? Oh, looks like we got an offensive rebound. Deuce McBride gets the ball back. And let's see what he does here. Again, he kind of like, in the second half, he kind of had a knack for taking games over and kind of knowing when he needed to start scoring uh, right there. Uh, try to get that little lob play in here. He is in the mid post. Let's see what he does here. Can't get that shot to go, but that's kind of his comfort zone, that those mid-range pull-ups, um, you know, very good off the dribble. He can post up a little bit too just because of that strength. Remember, 6'2", 200. Um, and, you know, he embraces that contact as well. So, you know, pretty small, pretty undersized, but just, like, overall, like, he plays bigger than 6'2", I would say, um, which is obviously good. And, yeah, you can see him off the ball right now in weak side, staying attached. And then, again, I don't know what happens here. Um, okay, let's see what Emmett Matthews is doing. So, he has to take this guy over, so Deuce has to scramble. Right, so again, good job recognizing that scramble, and then it has to be a Matt Coleman three, different guy. The three goes in, not much Deuce can do right there because he has to take the first shooter, um, which is Kai Jones right there, who already hit a corner three in the first half. So, you know, not a bad rotation. He kind of held up his end there, and then it was just kind of one of his teammates that let him down when Deuce had to leave his man, ultimately. But not really his fault there. Again, we talked about it, how he's very attentive off the ball. I think he's a good off-ball defender. Just sometimes, you can see right there, just kind of like the... Again, he kind of struggles getting to the lane, but he is very good at just kind of creating separation in this little area on the floor, right? He could have taken that, you know, that 18-footer if he wanted to, decides against it. Um, yeah, but we talked about how off the ball, I think he's a very, very solid, astute defender. Just sometimes he's almost, A, he sometimes can commit too much to help, right? And just kind of just, uh, you know, give too much pressure, and it leads to kind of easy paths for, um, you know, the opposing team to, like, open a lane and then also I think it's because he notices too much that's going on around him it's almost like a stimulus overload right where he's noticing like oh this guy's in the corner I gotta guard him oh but there's a guy in the weak side oh but I gotta watch this pick and roll like you know I think there's almost like too many things that he recognizes that it almost freezes him for a second and so he's not like the quickest to react right there good job getting that loose ball and again just the the hit ahead leading to an easy basket right unselfish player gonna make the easy pass to Emmett Matthews here right and it leads to an easy dunk Good play from West Virginia right there. And you can see they're down by, what, 17? And they're going to come back and win this game, actually. So, uh, you know, Deuce will have a very big role in that um, as he finishes, I believe, in this game with uh, 17 points. So just stay tuned for that. It wasn't a big scoring half for him. Uh, but he'll get going in the second half here. Missed shot from uh, Courtney Ramey. And here comes Sean McNeil. Let's see what we got here. Like, is, are we going to get a ball screen? No. Kind of like a little bit of a motion. I don't even know what this is. Everyone's kind of just standing around for West Virginia right now. Uh, let's get the ball back to Deuce McBride. And good job just kind of like, so right here. Again, like he's not going to be a guy that can really make like advanced reads as a point guard, right? But he can do this, right? So it's like simple... Right, Kai Jones, he sucks him in, and then that should be an easy Sean McNeil three, right? Like, things like that he can definitely do. Um, and, you know, he can almost kind of turn that separation skills, like, outside of 15 feet into a skill itself, right? If that pull-up jumper gets really good um, and more reliable, you can see right here, just in Courtney Ramey's grill, let's, let's rewind this defensive possession for Deuce McBride again, just showing you that point of attack value, right? He's in his face, getting over that screen, right? Gets pushed off, he's right back in his face, forces Ramey to pick up his dribble, Right, and now Kai Jones has to take that kind of like that fadeaway mid-range, right? And again, just kind of like the value of a point of attack defender, I would say, is just almost delaying and making people uncomfortable. It's not necessarily getting steals. It's not necessarily, um, you know, offering like, you know, 
rim, like basket protection. It's just about kind of getting the other team disorganized, getting them to feel the pressure, making them uncomfortable, and then just kind of delaying them from getting into their offense, right? And so that's ultimately what the job of a point of, of attack defender is in my book. And I think Deuce McBride, in terms of that, like he's definitely top three, I would say, um, you know, along with like Davion Mitchell. Um, so he's definitely up there in that class in terms of point of attack defenders. It's just not really a super valued skill. That's a really nice pass. Holy shit. He rifled that shit. And again, this is actually a pretty advanced read, but he does kind of have, you know, he does show some playmaking chops. It's, you know, I just think he's better off the ball. But this is, this was a fucking laser. Holy shit. Right on the money. Um, you know, I don't really expect him to make that type of pass very often just because I'm not sure, you know, if that'll ever like be a situation in a season in the NBA, but that, you know, great pass from, uh, McBride right on the money too, kind of showing you that quarterback, uh, skill that he had in high school, but that was a rifle. And again, he's not going to be selfish. You know, he's not only shot hunting for himself. He's going to get others involved, you know, and again, like if you're looking to make those passes, you'll get better at him, right? Just kind of like repetition. And, um, you know, that's just kind of like a very solid overall acumen, very solid mindset that I think Deuce McBride has. Uh, oh, was this the game where they went banana? Jeez. This was the game where they got, let's see what happens. This is the game where Texas, they were like screaming at each other in the huddle and they lost this game. Oh, wow. I totally forgot about this. You can see they're just getting into, they're just screaming. I think it's, uh, Andrew Jones and Courtney Ramey. They're just getting into it, Right. And so you can see it's a 14-point game right now, and West Virginia is going to come back and win this game. <laughs> um, I totally forgot about that. I, yeah, I remember that happening, uh, you know, watching this game. But, damn, I, I didn't realize it was this one. Yeah, so, yeah, you can see Texas is kind of on the brink um, of just kind of, like, exploding at each other, I think. Um, so, yeah, that makes this game a lot more interesting, I would say. Um, and it obviously will because the game gets closer. Right there, Deuce McBride kind of forcing Coleman towards the baseline. And you can see him on Greg Brown. And again, just like right there, right? That's just so incredible, so tough. He Again, Davion Mitchell, we talked about how like he kind of guards with his chest, right? Because he's so strong. He can just kind of like, you know, I'm trying to think of like an example. Like, you know, I don't know if you guys have seen the movie Dodgeball, right? But you know when uh, the kamikazes, right? They come and like their warm-up thing is that they're like, they're slapping each other, each other in the stomach, right? And they just start screaming, right? I think that's kind of similar to what Deuce McBride's doing here, right? He's just taking his chest and he's just taking the hit, right? Like, right there. And again, he gets that steal because Greg Brown, obviously not the best ball handler, or not a steal, but just almost a turnover, right? And again, it's just Deuce McBride making plays all over the place, right? Again, he's not afraid of contact at all. You know, he's a tough, like, kind of a bulldog type of mentality. Um, you know, really, really impressive stuff right there. And here he is again on uh, Matt Coleman, it looks like. You can see, let's see what he's going to do here. One pass away. Yep, right there. Going to switch that screen. So right there, he maybe, maybe lost Kai Jones for a second. Uh, it's going to be a turnover for Texas, but, um, you know, maybe a little bit more attention right there to Kai Jones. But I think he probably was thinking someone was going to take him and then he would just switch onto a perimeter guy. Um, but, you know, whatever. So again, right here, you can kind of see, like, he rejects the ball screen right here and he just can't really get by Matt Coleman. Right, so Evan Matthews is going to clear out, and so he probably has a lot of space to work with, assuming Brock Cunningham follows uh, Emmett Matthews, right? But he just can't really get by Matt Coleman, and again, that's where I kind of think that, you know, he has a decent handle, it's just not really like a, uh, you know, a distance covering uh, handle, if that makes sense, right? So like, he can get free when he's trying to get to that pull-up jumper, right? But when he's trying to like, create space and get to the lane, right, that's when it becomes an issue for him. And so that's why I kind of think he's probably better off playing the two right there. Scramble situation, three goes in for Courtney Ramey. Let's see what happens here. So again, scramble situation, uh, McBride has to take Courtney Ramey, right? Let's see what happens here. So Jalen Bridges, I think, is going to move down. Oh, no, I see what happens here. Okay, so he has to help on the drive. That should probably be, uh, I don't even know what happens there. That's kind of a scramble situation for West Virginia, but usually I wouldn't like to see him uh, play one pass away and help over that much, but that is one thing he does a little bit too often, but I think that's more of West Virginia's scheme where they want to, like, be really, like, you know, aggressive in terms of shutting down driving lanes and they'll kind of live with a three-point shot. Um, so yeah, I think that's more of a system thing more than anything, and again, I, I don't really have any doubts about Deuce McBride, you know, picking up NBA defenses. I think he's a super smart kid, you know, like, again, like, one of the guys that you really don't hear anything bad about, um, in terms of, like, pre-draft stuff, you know, you see, 
some rumblings like, ooh, Jalen Johnson character issues. Ooh, Jonathan Kaminga doesn't work hard. Uh, you don't really hear any about any of that with Deuce McBride. So, um, you know, that's obviously a good, a good thing. So, again, I think he can kind of fit into any type of, uh, you know, defense and be effective to some degree to the, you know, the ceiling of wh- that which point of attack defenders have, right? I think he could kind of like scratch the surface of that ceiling, right? Um, but yeah. What was I talking about before that? Oh, just like the separation he gets on jump shots, right? Like it's just, you know, it's he's better off kind of like 15 feet and out and he kind of struggles when he gets into the lane. Um, that's kind of what I've noticed too. And yeah, we'll watch him here again. It looks like West Virginia's kind of in like this weird like trapping matchup zone, but right now they're pretty much in a man. And yeah, here we go. And again, you can see Deuce McBride just in his grill, right? Just look at that trap too, right? And it's going to be a charge because Deuce McBride is forcing... Courtney Ramey towards that corner. Emmett Matthews takes the brunt of that, obviously. But again, that all is set up because of McBride's just like elite positioning defensively, right? And again, like he's the type of guy, like if I'm playing fourth grade travel basketball and I'm going against like Deuce, Deuce McBride, like I'm terrified of bringing the ball off the floor, right? Because I feel like he is a guy that's just going to be in my face constantly. He'll have, he'll be trying to reach for steals, things like this, kind of like just being a nuisance, right? Um, so I think he kind of like, uh, you know, kind of like reduces the confidence of opposing ball handlers. Right there, showing a little bit of that rawness in terms of passing and just overall passing feel, right? You know, I can kind of, you can kind of tell like he's not the most comfortable making these types of passes. Um, you know, right there, just the touches off, maybe not a, the best read, but, um, you know, just kind of one of those things. And again, that's why I kind of see him more of like a third guard slash off ball guard type. And again, it doesn't really matter um, what he really offers if he's playing with like a big point guard, right? Right there, he had to scramble out a little bit of a late closeout. Not really. Let's rewind this really quick. So Emmett Matthews. Let's see where Emmett Matthews is because he'd just be staying on Matt Coleman. So he's going to crash the glass, right? And then this isn't on Deuce McBride, really. Like, Matthews just leaves his guy, and they kind of just do a switch off of the rebound. But that's, that's tough. He's had a few of those plays where it's like it kind of looks like it would be his fault, but then if you go back and watch it again, and you're kind of just like, oh, this is where his teammate screwed up, right? Um, so yeah, that's just kind of interesting to see. Jalen Bridges, big time shot right there. You got a 12 point game, 13 minutes left in the half. He's in for the entire second half too, just FYI. And you can see it again, just kind of like being a pest. Texas can't get it to go. Can they get the, no, on the ground. Looks like a jump ball. I think it's going to be West Virginia ball. So again, DHO rejects it. Mid-range, can't get that one to go. But again, he'll take a lot of those shots. And again, like I think he probably needs to either stop taking those or just kind of extend that range out to three. Um, Let's see. Again, so like Deuce McBride here defensively, right? Just watch him. So he's going to get kind of, he'll get kind of cooked here by Matt Coleman. Coleman does a really cool in and out dribble right here. But it's like, watch how he doesn't really give up on the play, right? So he gets cooked right here. And then Kai Jones is going to have an open three. He decides to drive baseline. Just watch McBride just sprint towards the baseline, right? And covers that, forces the travel with Kai Jones, right? Because, like, he's right there. And he's just so quick at kind of, like, shooting those defensive gaps and seeing and recognizing where his team's defense might be, you know, weak, right? Or just kind of lacking in that certain spot. And he's so good at kind of, like, covering for other people's mistakes, right? And just having a guy there makes a huge difference because right there, you can see, like, Kai Jones kind of just, like, afraid of his own shadow in a way. Um, you know, the second Deuce McBride kind of walks over, he hears footsteps, gets the travel call. Let's see what we got here. Not much going on. McNeil, three. No. Again, three on two. Let's see what happens here. McBride, again, good job defending. Can't really get anything going. They're going to switch that ball screen. Another ball screen. Jones rejects it now. They're just right back into the switch. And this is, yeah, tough possession for Texas. McBride did a nice job kind of just like communicating, you know, holding water right there. Ooh, Sean McNeil. Bang, bang. But no, I mentioned in the first half, like, Deuce McBride, like, he was one of those guys that I could have seen, like, going bananas in the tournament, right? Ultimately, wasn't in the cards. I think he had a really good second half against Syracuse, if I'm not mistaken. Just wasn't really enough. 
Um, you can see, again, great perimeter defense right there. Uh, but yeah, you know, he was one of my favorite players to watch probably in that, in this college season. He was a finalist for Douglas Player of the Year, uh, along with like Jared Butler and uh, a few other guys. Uh, Jared Butler ultimately won that. Uh, right there, we're going to... Looks like we're drawing a foul here. And again, good job just kind of recognizing that mismatch. And again, he's pretty strong through contact, right? So we guys can kind of bounce off of him, right? But you can see he doesn't really have that separation thing with the ball in his hands when he's going downhill, right? He's much more comfortable going laterally than he is going, like, north-south. Um, oh, wow, he didn't give him a shooting foul on that? Ooh, going to disagree with that. But, um, you know, just kind of those things. And that's why I think a role for him where he doesn't really have to kind of, like, draw defenders in and then kick out or, like, kind of get downhill and drive, right? I think um, I think that's probably better suited for him. So that's why I'm thinking, like, okay, if Atlanta maybe wants to get him at 20, I think that's a little bit high for him, but I could see it. Um, you know, I think that he would be a great fit there just because he can kind of play off Trey Young, right? Um, and then maybe run the second unit as well. Just guys like that. Um, you know, same thing with, like, a, uh, I don't know, let's say, like, I think the Jazz had the 30th pick, so like, let's say they take Deuce McBride, right? And he's kind of just like another one of these like pretty athletic, really good defending uh, perimeter guys, right? Alongside Donovan Mitchell, assuming Mike Conley leaves, you know, I think he'd be good there. Um, you know, there are a lot of fits for him. And again, every team can pretty much, you know, outside of maybe a few, like I don't think Cleveland would want him, right? But um, uh, given their like overall uh, stature in terms of height, right? Um, but I think there are a lot of teams that could use a guy like him, and especially because because the NBA has such an emphasis on, like, bigger initiators offensively, right? It almost becomes more advantageous. Not more advantageous, but just, like, it gives, like, these smaller kind of, like, scoring guys um, a little bit more of a chance to succeed in a non-ball handling role all the time, right? So, like, you know, you look at, like, guys like Luka Doncic, right? So, like, now you have, like, is Jalen Brunson a, a one or a two? It doesn't really matter because he can play either, and you're not really giving up anything, like, size-wise, Right? Um, and so I think that's something that's really like just kind of important as the NBA kind of grows uh, into a new like sort of like era in terms of all these like jumbo playmakers and jumbo initiators. Um, you know, you can get you can draft guys like Deuce McBride and not really be worried about like the size disparity that you may have. Um, and yeah, so I think you know with that addition and that new archetype in the NBA, relatively new archetype, um, you know, it gives guys like Deuce McBride who maybe don't really have like the the overall feel, that could have been a charge, but anyway, good job setting up right there. But uh, maybe don't have the, the like the natural feel of a point guard, right? Um, it gives him like a chance to kind of succeed in other avenues. We got a uh, free throws for Emmett Matthews right here. We'll skip these. And there we go. And let's see what we got here. Again, Deuce hasn't really been scoring a whole lot. So these last 10 minutes, he probably goes a little bit nuts. I think he's had... Uh, I think he hit a mid-range jumper, a f uh, another mid-range jumper, and then two free throws, four free throws, so maybe he has eight points right now. Um, don't think he's hit a three yet either. One thing I do think that he maybe needs to just improve, this is like a very small fix too, but I've noticed a lot of times like when the ball is on the weak side, it's not really that he's like ball watching because like he still is aware of where his man is, right? But it's almost like just watch how he's kind of turning his back to his man, right? And I think that's a little bit concerning, even though he has full awareness, like you'll see, right? Like he has full awareness and he's like looking over at his man constantly, but just in terms of like his overall technique and positioning, I'd like to see him kind of just like open up his stance a little bit just so he can kind of keep both, um, you know, keep both the ball and his man in like on, uh, you know, uh, you know, just kind of like, oh, keep notice of both those guys, right? Um, right here, we're going to see the pull up three pointer. And again, just kind of starting to hunt his shot. And again, just like gets good elevation on that shot. And again, the pull-up jump shot, whenever he shot it, I swore it was going in because it's just, he has such like a just overall like smooth game in that regard, right? He can rise and fire, um, gets good elevation. And we'll see it right here again, the replay. Again, this is on Greg Brown. Like he doesn't have his hands up. McBride's able to just kind of knock that one in. Um, that's just a really impressive shot and something that he did a lot. At West Virginia, again, 41.4% from three this year. Um, and yeah, that was just like a big part of his game. Got a timeout right here, so we'll skip ahead. You can see Deuce McBride, again, just like in his grill, right? Coleman kind of has to go to that, you know, kind of like putting his back in front of him right there. We got travel, right? And that pass probably a sitting duck anyway. Uh, you know, that all starts because Deuce McBride is just like, you know, 
making Coleman work 94 feet. Um, we got him in the post right now again, setting that screen. Just look at, just look at like just how. When is the last time you see someone who's like six two setting a screen like this? Right? They ran something similar like this in the first half, where it's not really like. It's kind of like double Spain in a way, actually. It's kind of like offset. It's weird, right? Because McNeil's going to set this first screen. Culver's going to run to the basket. And they're trying to get Culver on this little like post touch right here. But I'm sure McNeil's going to pop out to the left wing. Uh, but like, so like, McNeil's going to step out and watch Deuce McBride just like getting his body into Jericho Sims, who's one of the like stronger, you know, big guys, right? Just setting that screen, right? And it doesn't really do much, obviously. He's 6'2", but like just the ability to not fear contact and just like give it your all. Because so many of these guys, when they're screening off the ball, it's just such a nightmare, right? Like, it's just, there are all these ghost screens. They're just standing there, right? You know, Deuce McBride's just, like, putting his, like, you know, he's, like, putting his legs into uh, these guys, right? Trying to get his teammates open. Um, again, just kind of like an unselfish leader type, you know. He'll be a great locker room guy. And, yeah, I'm really excited to see where he ends up. Again, I think I'm probably going to have him, like, in those bottom three first-round picks. So, 28, 29, 30. Um... But yeah, that's just kind of where I would put him. Uh, you know, I think obviously he has his overall limitations, but um, I think there's enough there in terms of the point of attack defense, the bulldog mentality, the shooting is obviously there. Um, you know, I kind of think that's where he kind of stands out to me. Uh, you can see right here again, just yeah, moving his feet right there. And this is another example where he kind of just gets beat. So, again, like, I think he's almost, like, too close to him, right? And then, so, sometimes, like, kind of when you're trying to play this aggressively, right, like, you have a better, you have a worse chance of kind of containing, right? And so, like, right here, Coleman's just going to get by him. It looked like he wanted help from Culver. Yeah, I wonder if that was, like, the game plan. But, um, again, like, McBride needs to do a better job just kind of containing. And I think he'll do a better job of that once NBA teams kind of are just like, hey, maybe take, like, a half step back, right, just so you can kind of, you know, uh, contain the dribble drive better. And I don't think he'll have any issue doing that. Um, but that's just something I think he needs to work on a little bit. But again, like, that aggression and everything, that comes from a good place. You know what I mean? Um, it comes from just, like, kind of, like, you know, like, overall, just, like, a great defensive mindset, I would say. Um, and you can see right now, he's kind of learning, you know, kind of, like, giving Matt Coleman a little bit more uh, room uh, by half court. And here comes West Virginia again. Whoa. That is, okay. Let's see what we got here. And yeah, here we go. So Texas is going to take it out, see what they do here. McBride, one pass away. The stunts, we got a foul here, it looks like. So we got a foul on Deuce McBride. Let's see what happened here. Are you going to show us the game? Or are you just going to like... Oh, cool. Sean McNeil, zero. Of you. Oh, I think they were uh, they were trapping him out of the inbounds. And I think they wanted him uh, as a out-of-bounds stepper. But they didn't get it. Um, let's see what McBride does. Again, right there. Just like the trap out of the inbounds. And that, that time it actually works, right? Just kind of... You know, just like little things like that. With Jericho Sims, he can kind of just like punch the ball from underneath, right? Um, we'll watch a replay of this right here. So, again, he's almost, like, kind of, like, top-locking it right off the inbounds. And you can see, like, Jericho Sims gets free. Oh, that's actually uh, Jalen Bridges with that strip. Good job for him. And again, another really nice screen on Greg Brown. And that one, it doesn't go in. But, again, just to replay it, where I just watch the screen, he sets on Greg Brown getting Taz Sherman an open look, right? And those are the things that Deuce McBride will do, right? Oh, let's see what he does here. Great shot fake. Bang! Deuce McBride, baby. Let's go. Again, Knack for taking really clutch shots at key time. Six and a half minutes left. West Virginia on a major comeback. They're down by three. Get the ball to Deuce McBride. He will knock it in and tie this game. Right? Again, really nice shot fake to step back. And again, really fluid in terms of off the dribble jumpers. Right? Um, that's probably one of his bigger strengths, I would say. Um, and yeah, that big time shot for uh, McBride right there. And again, you can see him just active. Like this time he's like really focused, really locked in. Again, just moving his hips right there. You know, he was basically remained square to Coleman the entire time. We're going to get a block right there. But, um, again, you can see kind of just, like, the ramped-up intensity after hitting those shots, right? Not that he wasn't intense before, obviously. What happened here? Let's see what let's see what happened here. Oh, so again, so, like, Deuce McBride just got drilled on a screen again. And, again, it wasn't like that he saw it and he just kind of tried to avoid the contact. Like, you know, he's running full speed and he's just getting brick-walled. 
Um, that's the second time that's happened. So maybe get a little bit better awareness, but also that's kind of like a teammates thing um, where, you know, they kind of kind of call out screens. Uh, right here, McBride's going to take this uh, shot off the DHO. Maybe a little bit rushed, but, um, you know, he, he's hit two in the last three minutes here. I can understand the heat check. I um, mean, you can see right there, just like right in Andrew Jones's face. The second he crosses half court in his grill, again, moving laterally well, but then right there, you can see he kind of gets burnt. Luckily, though, Gabe Asaboyan is right there for that rim protection, right? And so I think with McBride, like, if you want him to kind of be unleashed defensively, you better have a good rim protector, right? Like, let's say he does go to the Jazz at 30. Um, you know, I think that kind of helps because McBride could offer enough resistance, right? And then you also have that safety valve and go bare. Like, I think in the playoffs with the Jazz, like, you maybe were seeing them rely too much on Gobert because their point of attack defense was not really doing very well, kind of like containing the drive, right? But um, with McBride, like, he does a good enough job containing the drive most times that you can kind of tell him to play a little bit more aggressively. And then you have Gobert, obviously, as one of the better shot blockers, if not the best shot blocker in the game. Um, but, you know, a guy like him would be really awesome for Utah just because, like, you know, like, they struggled point of attack. Donovan Mitchell obviously gets tired after having to basically carry the offensive load. Um, McBride would be a nice change of pace guy, either off the bench or maybe starting in some cases, right? If Mike Conley leaves, so he's that's a, that that's a fit I can see working. Um, you know, McBride to Utah, right there. We got a blocking foul. I don't think Texas is in the bonus yet. And here we go again. You can see McBride kind of doing the same thing. He's kind of, you know, monitoring the off ball action. You're going to see him on Coleman right there. Andrew Jones can't hit that three. Jericho seems big time rebound. McBride, though, kind of gets caught reaching. I think it's going to be on him. Yeah, foul on him reaching, but overall, I kind of like the the attempt at least. See right there. Again, let's watch this inbounds play. So, again, Jericho Sims gets the ball. I think that's Jericho Sims on the inbound, right? And so you can see, like, he's making that pass difficult, almost gets a deflection, right? And then because of this screen and because, like, I think this is Andrew Jones, he has, like, nowhere to go, right? Because he can't go back this way because McBride's pretty much cutting off that angle. He's forcing him back into the screen. And then Asa Boyan, credit to him, he plays this really smart where he kind of just traps that, and it's an easy steal for West Virginia, right? And, again, that's a combination of kind of, like, West Virginia's scheme. Woo! Okay. All right, Deuce McBride. Like, I don't think this will be part of his game, but, again, good on him kind of getting by uh, Jericho Sims right here. But you're going up against Greg Brown. Like, that's... You know, that's going to be a tough finish again, for anybody, um, but specifically Greg Brown versus Deuce McBride. In that type of a battle, I'm definitely giving the edge to Greg Brown. Uh, but yeah, no, I appreciate the ambition. <laughs> and we got uh, free throws for Taz Sherman. And here we go. So let's see. Again, picking up basically 94 feet. Forcing a pass from their main point guard, right? Texas plays three guards, but, you know, you probably want him. You probably want Matt Coleman with the ball in his hands, I would say. We got a bad pass from Ramey, and here comes Deuce McBride. Let's see if he's looking ahead. Can't find anything open. Let's see what happens here. We're going to get a, nope, just kick out to McNeil. Oh, and here we go. We got Deuce McBride coming off the screen. Again, trying to get to that mid-range jumper. Can't really get anything going there. Gabe Asaboyan driving. Can get off McNeil. Three. Oh, no good. I think we got a shot clock. Did we get a foul on the three? Did we get a foul on the three? We did. Wow. <laughs> uh, here we go. We're back now. McBride kind of got killed on that screen a little bit. Uh, good play from Texas, kind of just getting that action going. Ramey, I think, kind of lifted up from the paint, and then he was able to act on that catch-and-shoot three at the top of the key. Yeah, two-point game here, three and a half minutes. And again, like West Virginia, beginning of this half, was down by 19. And then we saw that huge fight between, uh, I think, uh, Andrew Jones and Courtney Ramey. Right there, another simple pass from uh, McBride. And uh, he's going to able, basically fighting for that rebound. They can't get the jump ball. That could have been a jump ball. Um, but overall, that was a pretty good solid pass. Again, drawing in Kai Jones in that case from that weak side, right? And that's something that I think he's pretty good at, just kind of finding the simple read. It's just a matter of kind of just like creating that simple read, which I think will be a, a little bit more difficult for him as he gets to the NBA. See him right here, a decent contest. Tough shot from Ramey right there, though. 
we got a uh, one point Texas lead, two and a half minutes left. Um, but yeah, like just kind of like I, he's a guy that can take advantage of reads of you know situations created for him. I do struggle about his self creation abilities outside of just really getting his shot off from eighteen feet and on. Um, that's kind of where I think he tops out. I don't think he's going to be a guy that can really get to the rim at will. He's going to need a ball screen or some sort of assistance. In that regard, we got a foul here. But yeah, I think overall, though, I think this guy is a first-round guy, if not very early second. Probably, I'll say his absolute floor is like 35 for me on my final board, right? And remember, I mentioned it in the first half video that I'm limiting my board to 60 players just because I feel like um, if I can't get like 20 to 25 you know, hits out of 60, that's not really a good job for me. Um, you know, I I appreciate that there's more than 60 guys in the draft. Obviously, like, the draft goes by, like, you know, the undrafted free agent market is the best it's ever been. So, like, you'll get, like, you know, 70 to 75 guys maybe playing in NBA games next year that are rookies in this class. Um, but for me, I'm, I'm limiting it to 60, and I might do, like, a five-man, like, kind of honorable mention thing. But I pretty much have my 60 right now. Good contest from McBride. And uh, I'm pretty much rolling with those guys. Um, basically, how I construct it, uh, I know this isn't really the time to do that, but basically, like, the top 40, 50 guys are pretty much, like, straight-up rankings, like, um, you know, like, who I think is the best. Uh, the last 10 guys, they're guys, um, at least my philosophy, as we watch, I think McBride gets a foul call here. But just, like, little things, like, so I don't really think he could get a lot of creation, right? He kind of defers to going step back and try trying to go towards the basket, Right, and I think that could be a promising thing, but he doesn't really have that elite lateral like burst with the ball in his hands like we see like Davion Mitchell has, or like you know, um, you know, a Kemba Walker or someone like that, someone similar to his size. Um, you know, he's a little bit more like uh, truck built in that sense, where he doesn't really move super quick with the ball for his given his position. Uh, misses that first free throw right there, which is concerning, but he'll make the second one as he's five of six from the line. But um, you know, he'll often defer to those kind of step backs, those tough twos, which are useful in some cases. Um, but I'd like to see him get to the rim a little bit more. And again, like in transition off of closeouts, when he's not asked to be doing everything offensively for West Virginia as he is this entire season and, and this game late, um, I think those opportunities will kind of come more often for him. Got ball screen right here. Good job by uh, McBride kind of like forcing Ramey to reject or Coleman to reject that. You can see right now he's kind of playing drop coverage, and he's on Jericho Sims. Good job getting a body on him, right? He would have gotten that rebound if McBride doesn't get a slight body on him. Uh, Taz Sherman gets that rebound. And we got final minute 19 up by two. Um, we got a timeout here. But, uh, yeah, going back to my board. So, like, the top 50 guys, I think, you know, I think they're all, like, decent chances of sticking in the NBA, obviously, right? They're all, like, good players. Um, in the last, like, 10 or so, um, you know, there might be guys who are maybe better overall players, but for me, like, they almost are just too repetitive compared to the top 50. So, with my final 10 guys, I try to look for guys who are maybe, like, offer something, offering something unique, right? So, like, a perfect example is I'm going to have Dejan Giroux from Houston in my top 60 because I think at his size, like, his perimeter defense, his overall defense, his toughness, right, he has some passing feel as well, right? I think he's, like, a guy that I think could carve out a role for him self in the NBA, right? Another guy is Raekwon Gray, right? So, like, he's not, like, the best shooter, not the best distributor, but his overall frame, right? He's, like, 6'8", I want to say, like, 235, 240, right? I think he could do really well in certain defensive matchups, right? Um, and so, like, guys like that I tend to have in my 50 to 60 range just because I think they're, like, more unique compared to some of these other prospects. Like, for example, Austin Reeves, I mentioned him earlier, like, he's not going to be in my top 60 just because I think there are so many guys who do what Austin Reeves does better than Austin Reeves, right? Um, you know, so that's kind of where I'm leaning in terms of this, in terms of ranking these players in the class, especially the final 10. Um, but yeah, you know, that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, McBride, again, playing a little bit more conservatively, defensively, which I think is smart. Kind of monitoring Jericho Sims. Let's see what he does here. Okay, yeah, go to work. Let's see what happens here. And, oh, Kai Jones just lost a ball. Uh, they had an opportunity there. Uh, uh, what a shame, Texas. He just lost the. He just didn't catch it. Damn, that got. That's got to be frustrating. Got final thirty six seconds here. McBride gets out of the trap. And again, he's a smart player. Won't really force anything. He'll sometimes, you know, that lack of passing. He maybe gets caught in the air at times just due to his size. But like, you know, overall, like in terms of like being a ball handler on the perimeter right now, and like just kind of avoiding like 
and just taking on the defensive onslaught, onslaught, like, he's good in that regard, right? He's not going to be making stupid decisions, really. Uh, good strip by Ty Jones right there, too. You got to foul. Why, Sean McNeil? Why? Why would you foul there? Like, right there, that needs to be Deuce McBride time. Like, I'm sorry, but that needs to, he needs to get the ball there. You know what I mean? Um, classic West Virginia, though. West Virginia, like, it's, it's, I think it's still pretty bad right there. Oh, my God. Did they not get this rebound? So, Coleman misses the shot, and then West Virginia can't corral the rebound. But, I don't know if it's just, I don't know if it's, like, just me, but, like, whenever I think of West Virginia basketball, the first thing I think about is the horrible possession in the end of the, uh, Gonzaga game in 2017. Um, it was, like, Javon Carter, and, like, it was probably one of the worst, I think Dexter Miles might have been on the court then, too, but it was, like, one of the most frustrating possessions, the Titanic guy gave the gave that possession to Titanic music. Like, it was so bad. And, like, that's the first thing that kind of screams West Virginia basketball to me. It's just, like, this inability to really close games because they're so built on defense. And, like, I thought this year was going to be different because I thought McBride could carry them farther. And I liked McNeil. I liked um, uh, Taz Sherman. I liked Derek Culver for what he was, you know, uh, capable of doing. And I just, they just ran into the, the zone, and it was just, you know, the zone pretty much eats everybody, so I don't really care. But, you know, just a tough tough break, tough overall, uh, uh, you know, matchup for West Virginia. Let's watch this last play again. So I want to see. So it looks like McBride's on Andrew Jones, um, and now he probably should be on Jericho Sims because that's, like, the first role. So, okay, that makes sense. So McBride does a good job kind of taking that role because if he doesn't, you know, Sherman's kind of doubling the ball, probably an easy dunk for Sims. So actually, this is a very smart kind of like, you know, positioning uh, possession for McBride and uh, tries to get that. Yeah, he offers the late contest on Jones, too. Uh, and then this is going to this is funny, actually. So like uh, there's a big review, right? And you think basically the game's over. There's going to be like 0. 0.7 left on the clock. But just like I want you guys to watch the last possession because I think it kind of is a good example of just like how. Um, you know, competitive and just like the overall, like the grittiness of Deuce McBride. So just watch this last possession here. And we still, okay, we're getting, oh my God, another timeout. Jeez, okay. Watch the last possession here though, because it, it kind of, again, just kind of shows you like the mentality of Deuce McBride. All right, here we go. So watch Deuce. Deuce is on, uh, I think that's Courtney Ramey, or not Ramey, uh, number 13. So again, you can see him. They're going to get a roll to the basket. Jericho Sims, Deuce McBride's right there to contest that. Like, holy shit. This guy is 6'2". Just the will to win right here. This is a pretty wide open. Like, if you told me right here, like, this looks like Jericho Sims is one of the better vertical athletes in this draft. Really good finisher around the rim. Shoots 63% from the, from the floor because he literally only takes these types of shots. The ball is mid-flight. I think it's right here. I don't know where it is, actually. I can't see it. But it's right there for the taking. Deuce McBride, end of the game. He gets that block. Like, that is awesome. Awesome play to end the game for Deuce McBride. Again, he's 6'2 doing that. Against Jericho Sims, one of the best vertical athletes in the draft. West Virginia comes back comes back and wins. What a great play. Shot guy, I think, wanted a foul. But, like, we'll watch it again right here. Deuce McBride makes the play to come over. Oh, he got drilled. Okay, McBride drilled him, actually. That should have been a foul, but... Whatever, hands part of the ball, I guess. But still, just like the overall, just... If he doesn't do that, it's either like... You know, if he gets called for a foul there, it's either a foul or it's an easy dunk. You're putting Jericho Sims on the free throw line, and he's not a good free throw shooter anyway. But just like... That is just such a winning play, right? Uh, yeah, that... Again, that's like an awesome, you know... Awesome way to end this game. Foul or not, I don't know if Jericho Sims makes both of those free throws anyway, so... Basically, Deuce McBride saves the game for West Virginia there. Um, thought that was a good play to end this video on. And again, kind of shows you the overall mentality, the mindset of Deuce McBride, what makes him kind of like a top 28 to 32 guy on my board. Um, you know, I think the shooting's legit. I think off the dribble, he's really good. Um, needs to get, do better getting to the rim, obviously. But, um, you know, his defense will get him on the floor early. Um, and, you know, he just kind of has that leadership mentality, that bulldog mentality that I really like. And, yeah, probably one of my favorite players in this class. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. And yeah, we will see you soon. I think I'm going to do... Who am I going to do next? I think I'm going to do... Uh, I want to say Chris Duarte next from Oregon. Um, so just stay tuned for that. And um, yeah, have a nice night. If I don't talk to you before then, have a nice night uh, watching the finals. Big game tonight for game six. So thank you guys and have a great one. Bye.